Today I'm going to show you how to make a um, phone, a cell phone bag, something similar to this, across the body with a couple of zips, somewhere where you can put your cards, your telephone and perhaps some money or just if you're going somewhere and you don't want to carry a big handbag. Um, there's three ways you can do this. You can have it with a cross the body strap or um, a wristlet strap or you can hook it on belt loops uh, on your clothing um, and this is what you're going to need so from your main fabric the, and I'm going to be using all little scraps of fabric as you can see look there's nothing very big here at all it's just a way of getting rid of, of everything um, and making something really smart and nice out of it so the main fabric you're going to need this is going to be the back so this is going to be uh, four and a half by seven inches this one four and a half by four inches this piece four and a half by two inches it'll all become apparent as to where each piece will go you need two little pieces here for your tab ends for your belt um, for your strap to hang off and they're just really scrap pieces but they do actually measure my two pieces measure two inches by two and a half inches you can get away with a little bit narrower than that and then that's all your main pieces and then you're going to need one piece of contrast um, which is four and a half by seven inches and your lining fabric which you've got two pieces here of four and a half by seven inches and you've got one four and a half by six and one four and a half by four inches and then there's two zips uh, you'll need at least six inches well, from, you don't really need them six inches but enough to, to, to go across the top of the bag you can have it as long as you like and it, it can be cut anyway these will be cut so two zips two swivel clips and two d-rings or you can have round just ordinary the round rings and then you're going to need um, whatever length of a uh, strap you want so just measure across your shoulder if you want to cross the body strap and uh, if you want a wristlet strap then just you know measure how long you'd you'd want to have it around your wrist to hold it um, and that's it so to get on with it we will make the little tab ends for the D-rings or the O-rings or whatever. Uh, actually, I'll do the but I'll do the strap first. And the way you do that is you take your length of fabric, whatever it is you've measured, fold the length of it in in half like that, so you've got a crease line, and then you fold each piece into the center like that just like bias binding and then fold it in half and then that will give you um, this is like two and a half inches wide and then whatever length you need and that will give you a nice thin strap whether it be for a wristlet strap or or a uh, across the body one okay and then you do exactly the same thing for your little tab ends so I've been and done that and I've stitched these two little tab ends which um, I'm going to which looked like that but now look like that in the same way as I've just showed you and instead of putting the d-rings on there I want to put the swivel hooks on because um, this is the one that's going to be detachable this is this is what everything's going to be detached from your bag so 
if you know if you want to do a multiple strap one for the across the body and a wristlet strap or you want to hook it on your your clothes on your belt loops then you need these to be on your actual bag okay so that's that one done and this one it's just a matter of putting it in and then uh, folding it in half and then putting it to one side until we need it okay and I've used I've done the cross the body strap and I've used uh, the round rings rather than the D-rings only because I'd got them spare on the side so I've gone ahead I've sewn my strap I've threaded those through and double backed and I've stitched over several times to make sure it's secure okay so we can we've done that now we can put them to one side now we're going to start off with uh, the small piece because this is what's going to be I cut this in such a way that it was was it that one? No, it was that way so that when it joins up and it has a zip in between uh, it'll look nice so what you're going to do is um, lay your uh, little piece uh, that, that matches your bottom piece which that one is four and a half by two inches so sit that up faced up and if it's directional fabric um, you need it to be facing upwards not upside down and then get your zip and place it across the bottom like that of the fabric and then you're going to stitch along here a quarter of an inch on your zip and then when you've finished fold it over you can press it if you want to or just finger press it and then top stitch that okay Okay, so I've done that and I've top stitched it. So that's and I've sort of it isn't central of the zip, but it's it's doesn't really matter because they're, they're just gonna be chopped off. Right, so then you take one your lining piece and your other front piece, which is the same size, which is a four and a half by four inch piece. And this is the piece that um was matched off there, look when I cut it okay now your lining piece if there's a right side and the wrong side you want the right side facing upwards mine it doesn't matter it's the same both sides because I've used plain so you lie that down with your right side facing upwards and then uh, place the zip top end across the top like that over the top the piece that you've just joined and make sure that the sides line up as well as the very top lines up and then the piece that you want uh, for, for for that you turn it so it's right side down and it's level with the zip and the sides And then you're just going to stitch that. I did say it was a quarter of an inch seam on the zip the last time. It isn't a quarter of an inch seam. It's it's less than that. Um, like an eighth of an inch. Okay, so you're just going to go across the top there. And just before you stitch it, just check that your fabric is lying the way you want it to lie, which, which is exactly how I want mine. Okay, so... When you've done that, fold it over, finger press, and just top stitch along that, the same as you did that piece. Uh, 
So now I've I've done that and it's all nice and top stitched and we've got the lining piece on the back. Okay. Don't be tempted to cut your zip off too soon because you might end up it splitting open. So I if it was me I would just leave leave them in, that's what I would do. So right, next take your next lining piece which is the four and a half by six inch piece and lay it face side up if you've got a right side or a wrong side. Like I said before I haven't got any difference on mine so uh, it makes it easy. So if it's if it's a pretty pattern it needs to be faced up and lay this piece on top. Okay, and match all the way round. Make sure it sits nice and flat, getting the sides together and the top and the bottom together. Okay, just put a couple of pegs in to hold it all. And you're going to have to bring the zip open a little bit so you don't uh, catch it when you're running through with the sewing machine. The zipper pull, you don't want that going in the machine. So now you're going to stitch all the way completely around that rectangle, a quarter of an inch seam, all the way around, and joining them both together. Okay. Okay, so I've done that. Um, just trim all that done all the way around the edge like I said I've left the zip open partially but now uh, we're safe now this zip isn't going to go anywhere it's been stitched down the side so now's the time to cut it off so you're now left with the pocket basically and that on the back okay so now you need to take your next lining piece which is the four and a half inch by seven um, and if you have got uh, a right and a wrong fabric you need the right side down the, so the pattern side down facing the top of that so just make sure that zip is out the way I'm going to half open that so it's completely out the way of my foot lay this on top so it's right sides together and then you're going to go across the top there and making sure that the sides are together and go across with a quarter of an inch seam and then when that's done flip it over and top stitch okay okay so that's done so you've you've still got your pocket thing and then you've got your lining flap on the back and this should be your right side of your fabric there if it's if it's a wrong or right side. So now if you take your contrast fabric, now I've put a little bit of uh, fusible fleece on the back of both of these pieces, the contrast and the back of the bag. Um, and I've used I've used scraps look, it's it's in pieces, it's just little projects to get rid of little pieces of stuff. Um, it doesn't matter, you can quilt it as well if you wanted to before you, you went ahead and did the next stage. So you, I've already fused it on. You don't have to have fusible fleece. You could use a bit of bosal, you could use a bit of body and it's just something uh, to give it a bit of body. Okay, so you lay your contrast piece faced up and you put this piece that you've just made faced up on top
and you're just going to do the same again and go all the way around uh, from there to there if you can hear the dog snoring I apologize so you're going to go all the way around there just not the top piece because that's going to be a pocket there okay so we'll do that okay so that's all done i meant to say that row of stitches that you did before if you go to just the outside edge of that because you don't want to be going in because you're going to be shortening your purse each time so if you go this side of the stitches nearest the edge all the way around um, then you know when you come to trim if you trim any stitches it'll be then okay so that's that stage done. So the next thing to do now is lay this face side up, uh, get your second zip and put that face side down uh, and match up the top edge. Make sure that uh, slider's out of the way and then take a lining piece and if it's uh, got a pattern on it, you want it to be face sides together, right sides together. And just lay this on top. Okay, so just match up all along the top and the sides. A couple of clips in. And go ahead and stitch that up there. And then when you... Uh, have done that, flip it over like that, just finger press both sides the back and the front and then top stitch along that piece. Okay so that's that done, um, it's all neat top stitched so the second zips in and now all we've got to do is put the back piece on and the other piece of lining so if you leave that lying like that get your back piece of your bag which has got your fusible fleece on and make sure that the fabric is running the right way round and not upside down and then just flip it over matching up the top seams of the zip and the fabric and just make sure the side seams are matched up as well and then just put a peg or two in that and then flip it over and take your last piece of lining fabric and match that up along the top the set the same as the uh, the piece you've just put in and just nip that in with under the under the pegs as well so you're going to go ahead now and stitch across the top of that zip and then flip it over and flip that piece over so it looks like that and then top stitch that piece so it's all neat Okay. So I've done that. Attached the back on so it's all nice and neat. But I've also put these tabs on while I was at the machine. So all you do is you lay it so it's level with the sides, the end of your uh, tab with your swivel hook on so it's just level with that on top of your zip and then make sure that your slider is in the center and place your next swivel one on level with with that and then just sew them on quickly uh, and now we can 
chop off the zips because they're all stitched up now and they're not going to go anywhere. Okay. So we're nearly there now. So now what you need to do is match up the front and the back like so and put a few clips in. And when you stitch this up around the sides you will be able to see the stitches that you've the lines that you created before and just come this side of them now um, to completely enclose everything okay so you're going to stitch the complete thing here all the way around and then when you get to the lining bit you'll be doing exactly the same except you're going to leave um, about three inches of the bottom open uh, just do that and there and there so you're going to stitch say from here this piece all the way around here completely all the way around and up here and end at that peg leaving that open so that we can turn the bag inside out okay right so I've uh, just keep that straight a minute I've uh, I've done that and I've I've double stitched over that bit where you've got the tab bits in with the swivel hooks because um, obviously that's going to be where it's taking uh, any weight and we don't want that coming off so and it might be a bit stiff going through your sewing machine but uh, just help it through and put it on a bigger stitch if necessary but go backwards and forwards with it and and whatnot and I've gone and I've trimmed all the way around the edge so there's no bulk and uh, uh, leave obviously leave the zip open otherwise you won't be able to uh, bring it through though this may be a bit stiff coming through here you might uh, you can do it. it it will work it's just you're just going to have to be patient and feed it through gently so you first off you're coming into your lining part and then we bring it through to the the proper side for the big reveal see my chopstick anywhere which is what I use to push everything out with so I'll have to use a paintbrush so just go at all those get all those corners out probably break my uh, paintbrush now but like so just push everything down and that one And there we have it so then all you've got to do now is bring the lining back out and when I was trimming 
I left that bottom uh, with extra on so that it was easier to just fold it over like so like that and then I'm just gonna do a running stitch there um, and then it's just a matter of pushing it all back inside Sips square, and that's it. And that's I pull it all out and press it in a bit, but then it's just a matter of popping your phone in, and it it's perfect. And uh, 